Hey guys, it's Paul here at Impulsive Culinary, and in this video, I want to talk to you about my homemade, gluten-free hamburger patty recipe. Slap them on the barbecue! Okay, so if you've watched any of my videos, any of them, you know that in our family, we are big endorsers of organic products, organic eggs, organic meat. And so, of course, this recipe, no exception. Some of the uh, older generation of our friends and family that have uh, eaten at our place in the past have told me, Paul, your burgers, they taste, they taste delicious, but there's something different about them. Can't put my finger on it. And then some, after some uh, polite conversation, it kicks in and one of them usually chimes up and says, it tastes like meat used to taste. And isn't that something to be said about organic versus non? So uh, that's where my preaching is going to stop, okay? But I will tell you that in this recipe, I'm going to be using, this is a local uh, company called Les Fermes Valens. This is a cooperative of uh, local organic farmers nearby us in Montreal, in Huntington, Quebec. And they are working very hard to uh, produce sustainably uh, produced uh, and humanely produced products like eggs and chicken and beef. Uh, it's a personal choice, and I get that. And price can be prohibitive, but prohibitive, but um, we're big believers. So in this recipe, just to let you know, I'm going to be using two types of meat. So ground pork and ground, ground pork and ground beef. Um, and I think that when you're making your own burgers, as long as you're uh, equating this out to two pounds of meat, you could put anything you want in there, whether it's bison, whether it's veal, uh, all kinds of gamey meats that, uh, that you may have access to. I highly recommend you mix at least two types of meat. But in this recipe, you're going to be using pork and beef, all right, uh, just to get that flavor right up there. One last sort of non-paid endorsement, but this is a personal choice. Guys, Montreal Steak Spice, unmistakable. This stuff, I could pick that out of crowd anytime. Um, I don't know if it's exclusive to this Clubhouse brand here or not, but if you can find Montreal Steak Spice, get yourself a case, all right? Um, there's a lot of steak spices out there, but this stuff, really top notch. All right, so let's get into the ingredient list, what you'll need for my homemade gluten-free hamburger recipe. Okay, so first, the meat. One pound of ground organic beef and one pound of ground organic pork. And like I said in the intro, guys, you can mix this up with any kinds of ground meat that you like. Uh, but for this recipe, that's what we're going to start off with. Two-thirds of a cup of breadcrumbs. Obviously, for us, we're going to be using gluten-free breadcrumbs that I sort of mass-produce on a weekly basis. Uh, but if you're making them from scratch, grab yourself two large slices of toast. Uh, you know, toast up some bread and put them in the food processor and you're good to go. One organic egg. Two tablespoons of red wine. And if you would drink it, it should go into your recipe. If you wouldn't drink it, don't use it. One tablespoon of sugar. Uh, one tablespoon, generous tablespoon, of Montreal steak spice, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and some fresh ground black pepper to taste. Let's make the best burgers in town, come on! So my only regret about this video is I didn't make it sooner during the hot season. It's gorgeous out and uh, it's been a little bit rainy up in Montreal for the past few weeks. But finally the sun is kicking out and the barbecues, you can smell them all over town, you know. He's making ribs, he's making chicken. So hamburger recipe, timely, okay, video right now. It's important. You got to have a good basic hamburger recipe. Uh, a lot of people getting the frozen stuff at the grocery store, and I get that when you have guests coming over. But if you want to wow your guests, okay, and your family with one of the best, and I mean the best, hamburgers homemade that you've ever tried, and it's so easy to convert to gluten-free. Breadcrumbs, just use gluten-free instead. These taste so good, guys, all right? Now, I will, can, I will caution you that, uh, yes, you can make them in advance and freeze them, but uh, having tested a few of these ourselves, they are amazing when they are fresh and you put them right on the barbecue and you have them before they have been frozen. After being frozen, they taste okay, don't get me wrong. You can actually cook them on the barbecue or in a pan from frozen and they taste fantastic, don't get me wrong. But by far, the supreme flavor and the effort that you're putting in for all of these quality ingredients, make them fresh and cook them right away. And trust me, your guests are gonna be asking you, what's this recipe? What is this about? Where does this come from? All right, so this one's going to be an exercise in mixology. There's not a lot of cooking going on in this one, right? So, big mixing bowl. Okay, so like I mentioned at the top, we're using two types of meat, ground beef and ground pork. Now, if you have access to some really funky stuff like bison or whatever, these are really tasty burgers too, guys. So it depends. Go talk to your butcher and see what you have access to. 
Uh, so I think that two types of meat are the bare minimum. You want to put one pound of each, get them in the mixing bowl. Okay, so I've toasted up some gluten-free bread here. I'm going to blitz that up in the food processor to make my bread crumbs. Okay, two-thirds of a cup of your gluten-free bread crumbs into the bowl. Reserve the rest. Next, crack in one organic egg. Now, about the wine. I've heard this before when I was younger and I didn't believe it. I thought, cooking wine? Bah, don't waste your good stuff. Man, more than ever am I a believer. You guys know that I like my Riojas, so I'm using two tablespoons or one-eighth of a cup of good red wine, pop it into the burgers. Mm, mm, mm. Now, if you're thinking, Paul, this is gonna be for kids, I don't want them eating booze. Trust me, when you cook these up, the alcohol is going to disappear. There will not be any alcohol left in this burger. All this is doing is imparting flavor. How many steaks have you ever marinated, okay? Or other kind of meats in wine, red wine, white wine, and all of that alcohol disappears, but the flavor, ah, it's still there. So get your two generous tablespoons of wine, put it in the bowl. Get yourself one tablespoon of sugar and get that in the bowl. Oh, the fabled Montreal steak spice. Yes, you can use steak spice. It doesn't have to be Montreal steak spice, but man, this is the stuff. I'm a proud Montrealer. I'm biased. <laughs> Generous tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, and then a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm eyeballing it. If you want to be really careful, you can measure it. But if you're off by a bit, oh, it won't make a difference, guys. Just don't add a cup. <laughs> Last but not least, you know what to do. And that is it. No cumin, no garam masala, no onions, nothing else. This to me is as complicated as it should get, all right? And I can tell you, just the flavors wafting off of here, I, I wanna have a barbecue and it's morning. <laughs> I would eat hamburger for breakfast if it was this hamburger for sure. All right, get your hands dirty, mix away. So the next logical question is, how big should you make your patties? Ah, so. Of course, it's up to you. I highly recommend one half of a cup. This uh, broken handle half cup thing of mine is, uh, is basically my patty maker. Um, whether it's salmon burgers or beef burgers, I'm gonna use this, slap them in, nice even level half cup, and put them out on a saran wrap, squish it out with my hand, just touch up the edges a little bit and fold it. It's not too messy, it's super easy. And if I have to freeze them, meh, I'm gonna do it. That sounds like a good Irish song name. Half cup patty. Okay, so there you have it guys. Eight beautiful half pound burgers and a little bit extra. I'm gonna take this and make a sort of like a, a mini patty because I'm gonna eat some right now. So whether you're cooking these on the barbecue or in a frying pan, uh, from fresh, you wanna do these for around four minutes minimum, okay, per side on medium low heat. That gives it a chance to get a nice brown crust without burning and to cook all the way through and just leave a tiny little bit, almost pink in the middle for those that like it medium. If you wanna overcook it, <laughs> well, shame on you, but uh, obviously five minutes per side or more is gonna do the trick. Don't do that, please. Now, as much as I try and wait until noon, wine o'clock, to have a beverage of some sort, um, it's always burger time. <laughs> Morning is fine for burgers. I don't know, 10.30? Yeah, perfect, let's do a burger. So while my pan's heating up, I just want to have a little conversation with you about the price of organic versus the price of those frozen burgers. You know the ones I'm talking about. You go to the grocery store and you say, well, I've got a few people coming over. I'm going to get a box of eight burgers, uh, Angus beef or something like that, grade A, quality stuff. Now the cost of that box, I'm talking eight burgers, okay? Consider that the price of buying fresh organic ground meat and using your own ingredients, a couple of, uh, a little bit of wine, some spices, it's gonna come out to be the same, guys, or even less than that box of frozen burgers. Now I get it, the timing can be a thing. You may not have the time, and that's okay, I get that. But if you've got the time, the cost is a non-issue. Just saying, just saying, preaching over, monologue done. Okay, so let's cook these up over medium low, four minutes per side from fresh. My one and a half burgers. <laughs> okay, let's give these beautiful burgers a flip. Let's start with the mini guy, my half burger. Perfect, that's exactly what you want. Nice little browning action on there. 
how beautiful. So, I'll cook these for another four minutes on this side, but we're gonna dig in. Yum! I just removed the little guy a bit before the cooking time is over because he's smaller, he's ready quicker. One lick of the thumb, and I know this is delicious burger time. Not kidding, guys. You must avoid the temptation to squeeze the burger or press it down. Leave the juices in. Gorgeous looking burger right there. Oh man, I can't wait to try these. Try. I know what they're gonna taste like. I can't wait to eat them. <laughs> I might share one with the kids, maybe. So there you have it guys, a beautiful, organic, gluten-free hamburger patty that you can be super proud of, okay? And serve these up and watch them disappear. Trust me, they're gonna be asking you for the recipe, all right? So my name is Paul from Impulsive Culinary, and thanks for watching the video, guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you found it helpful. We're gonna change up the weekly Friday live updates. We're gonna move those to Wednesday night. Now, selfishly, in the summer, I gotta admit, it's crazy on the weekends, and it starts with Friday. Uh, so Friday night's just not working. So guys, uh, I hope you're gonna join me on Wednesday night. Gonna bust open a little wine, hang out with you guys live here on YouTube and on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, and we're gonna have a little conversation with each other, let you know what's coming up in the impulsive culinary world. So that's coming this Wednesday night. And of course, every Saturday, a brand new how-to recipe video right here on YouTube. Guys, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Oh, music in my mouth.